trouble with, he is to get up maybe, get open, Okay, welcome. The event is going to start in eight, seven, six. <laughs> it feels a little bit like New Year's Eve. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Learn Together Building Apps with Microsoft Teams. I'm Christina Warren. I'm a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft, Please and I'm so excited us. to be Where here with all from? of you virtually you as listening? we learn more and learn together which country, which about city? Microsoft Teams and building apps for Microsoft Teams. So we've got a bunch of Please sessions today I'm that will uh, show you Germany, how to get started, how to build new applications, how to integrate with existing Nova applications. But before we get into that content, I wanted to bring in my friend Todd Anglin, who is the principal PM manager um, for M365 here at uh, Microsoft. And he's also uh, got um, Isabel uh, London with him, who is from the Teams team. Um, but uh, but Todd, I kind of wanted to, to start with you. So what can what we look forward to seeing today and what are you share. excited about seeing today? Hey, Christian. Morning, Christina. Uh, thanks. I, I, I'm pretty excited today. We've got a lot to cover. Uh, we're going to cover a lot in the next what, 120, two hours, uh, 120 hours, 120 minutes, two hours. <laughs> Uh, but we're going to talk about how you build apps for Teams. Uh, a lot of us now are spending a lot more time on Teams. Uh, we all know that Teams well, usage has exploded here during the pandemic. The there are 115 million daily active users. So we're spending a lot more time in here. Teams. It turns out that you can develop apps for Teams. There's a lot of extensibility points. And I think a lot of developers just don't even know what you can do. So we want to spend time today helping developers, helping you all understand forget, why should you build drink, these apps? Why should you extend Teams? Water. What Cold. can you do? Uh, yeah, how do you do fine. it? And uh, we're going to cover all of that with a lot of guests and a lot of people helping us out here uh, coming up. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I know we have Isabel. And Isabel, I said your name wrong earlier. I'm sorry, Isabel Lubin, who's here from the from the Teams team. Uh, what? Uh, so what exactly do you do on the Teams team? Will you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, and thank you for having me on. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I'm one of the product leads on Microsoft Teams platform. So one of the areas that my team looks after is making sure that developers of all backgrounds, any level of experience, um, have really great tools and resources for building awesome apps. So we try to make sure that it, wherever, wherever you're coming from, you have a way to build an app for Microsoft Teams. Fantastic. And where are people kind of coming from? Like, uh, like, what are the types of, uh, you know, developers or, or users even that we're seeing build Teams apps right now? It's really all over the place. And that's actually one of the most exciting things to see is that we're finding that customers from any vertical, you know, whether that's finance, healthcare, education, can really identify a way that they can improve Teams to really suit their needs. And so we're finding that there are tons of different scenarios and tons of different ways that people are extending teams. And I think that's one of the real powers of platform is that we're building all of these different extensibility points and making it possible for you to make teams your own. Yeah, so I, I know, Isabella, I, I was just mentioning how much teams has grown in the last in the last nine months during the pandemic. And I know anytime you scale an engineering project that fast, that wanted. big, hey. it's bound to make some things harder. Uh, have you have learned anything about how to do engineering as this has scaled uh, up? Anything surprised you? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really, really great question. And I think, you know, I was we were listening in on one of the watch parties was talking where they were talking about um, mm -hmm. how exciting it is that really Teams has been able to innovate at that pace. Me, and I think every time really you, you really like focus on scaling and innovation at the same time, you really need to make sure that you're able to balance those two different priorities. So I think just watching the team, make sure that we're responsive and able to have a really, really great experience for all of these users as they onboard and critically need the teams and the platform to work for them while also being able to innovate. I think my, my one personal learning is the importance of caching. You know, if, it, if you don't cache for long enough, then you have all of the clients hitting services to, tr to try to update. But also if you cache for too long, then you have users with stale information. So really hitting that balance and making sure that you're thinking user first all the time has been really, really important for the team. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. 
Yeah, and kind of on that note, what uh, uh, before we, we, we throw to our, our, our first session, I just wanted to know, like, what should developers keep in mind when they're building for Teams? Great question. Number one, think about what your users are doing. I mean, they're, they're in Teams, they're chatting with each other, they're having meetings. Think about what they're trying to accomplish and think about how your app is going to improve the, the what they're already doing. So if you're building something Please like an expenses app, is my app, sound of the microphone when, fine? When users are or is chatting very with each other in meetings, understand. when might they need to use an expenses app? And what scenarios Please are you designing for? And we find that when you design scenario first and really think about what users are trying to accomplish, that you're going to end up building out really great apps. Fantastic. Well, Isabel, thank you so much for, for talking with me. Todd, you and I are going to chat more a little bit later, but now we are actually going to go to our very first session where our own uh, 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 Burke Holland and Dan Whalen are going to present a fantastic keynote for us about you know bringing web apps to Teams. Check it out. Thanks, Christina. Hi everyone, my name is Dan Walleen, and I'm really excited to have you here with us to talk about how you can integrate new or existing applications into Teams. Whether you're working with a line of business application, a software as a service app, or an entirely different category of application. Exactly, Daryl, you got it. You can bring your apps directly That's it. into Teams. Having fun together, a productive learning. Way for users to get work done. To start things off, we want to help you visualize how you might take a web app that you have today and bring it into Teams. Our app is an existing customer management app that people use daily to get their jobs done. Today, this app is only available in the browser. So let's begin by taking a look at the app, and then we can see how we can make a better experience for users by integrating the app directly into Teams. So here's what our customer orders app looks like. I've already logged in through the browser using Azure Active Directory, and this particular app uses MSAL, the Microsoft Authentication Library. So now that I'm in, I can view customers in different ways, as you can see here, and I can even get to orders if I'd like. Now, in an earlier sales meeting, Burke Holland and I had been talking about some new customers, and Burke is new to the company, and he asked if I could put a new customer he had in mind into the system. So I said I'd do that, so let me go ahead and we'll enter Jamie Jones, I think the name was. So let me do Jamie Jones at 1234 Cedar Avenue in Phoenix, Arizona. Let me assign Jamie to Burke here. Okay, so I'll officially uh, insert Jamie. And now what should happen is an email will go out from the app itself and Burke should get that and he should be good to go. Now, it looks like I got a chat actually. So let's see, uh, hey Dan, new guy here. Did you add that customer yet? Also, when do I get my bonus? Well, first off, that was uncanny timing. But hey, whatever. And hey, he's motivated on the bonus, so I want to help him out. So um, yeah, didn't you get the email? So he should have got an email that has a link to it. Let me check. Okay, let's see what he says. No, but I did get one saying I won the lottery. All I need to do is send my social security number. Yeah, um, definitely do that. Not. Okay. Um, let me just say, you know, check the app because he should have the link there and be able to get to it from there. Okay, checking. Can't log in. I just changed my password and everything in my life is broken. Okay, well, that's a problem. So uh, probably the best way to handle this is we could just jump on a Teams call. So let me go ahead and take it from there. Hey, Dan, what's up, man? Thank you for this uh, completely impromptu and in no way scripted Teams call. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah, we didn't plan this in any way, shape or form, but how's uh, sales going at the company for you so far? Uh, it's been a rough morning. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, you can't log in, it sounds like. I can't log into anything. In fact, the only thing I can log into is Teams, which is pretty good because that's where I spend pretty much my whole day. Well, I mean, that's a good start. So I'll tell you what, you want me to walk you through a different option here that you can use? Yes, please. <laughs> it's actually super productive since you said you work in teams all the time. So uh, first off, you were trying to get to the app. So let me show you a little bit about that. You can actually get to it right inside of teams. If you click on teams to the left there. Okay. 
All right. You'll notice that uh, you're on the wiki for general in the Learn Together sale. So it looks like you've already been there. That's great. Were you going to add to your own wiki, I guess? Is that, is that what the plan is there? Yeah, man. I was about to uh, write, start writing my, that novel. Finally awesome. going to get yeah, done that's... right here in our team wiki. That'll totally help with sales somehow. Um, well, anyway, see that Tailwind Trader CRM tab right up there? One idea would be definitely to write a better wiki application tonight. Hey, look at that. That's the app. I recognize that. And I saw it said I was logged in. How's that possible? Yeah, so this is actually using single sign-on, which if you're not familiar with that, basically your Teams credentials, because you're already logged into Teams, obviously, are flowing down into the app. So you're kind of auto-logged in. And then what the developers did is they created a, a Teams app, and that's what this tab is here, so that we could actually embed the, the actual web app. So this is the app that um, I normally use through the browser, but I could also go through Teams just like this. Well, that's awesome. One last password to remember, but how do I find the customer that you just put in here? Yeah, and that's something uh, you can do it. So if you scroll down real quick, um, if you page through, maybe go to the third page, you could get to Jamie there. There's Jamie right oh, there. There they are. Uh, you could also filter. It's They're trying to work on that. But let me show you a little easier way, actually, that's kind of a new feature we have that we can use in the app in Teams. Um, okay. You want to click on chat there real quick? All righty. All right. And uh, see that Tailwind Traders bot there? I do, but I haven't clicked on it because, Dan, I don't interact with random robots on the internet as a general rule of thumb. That's, that's probably a good idea, I, I suspect. Go ahead, this one's safe. Um, it was created by our dev team, so go ahead and click on it. And uh, it looks like Jamie actually shows there. Hey, it automatically uh, inserted the customer here and notified me, that's pretty nice. Yeah, so this is using uh, something called a bot and using Azure bots combined with uh, adaptive cards. So what you see there is a card um, let me show you a little bit about the bot. Um, I don't know, you could type hello or howdy or type whatever you want there. Hello, how about, uh, what is the meaning of life? Yeah, give that a shot. I don't know if it's trained for that one, Burke, but. Uh... Well, if it's any a bot that's any good, then it's gonna know the answer here. <laughs> oh, it does, look at that, perfect. I, I think we're done here, our work is done, I mean. So once again, I was mute. So for everybody who just joined, we are streaming here an, a two hour live event from Microsoft Redmond about Microsoft Teams app development. So we're going to learn here together with us how to build Microsoft Teams apps. So we are live streaming a Microsoft official event and you can join here and write every kind of comments, what you find interesting, what you would like to you know, learn. Please share every kind of question in the comment. We need entertainment as well, oh, so yeah, please let us know what you think. Jamie, the one that's just added. Yeah. That's pretty awesome, so I don't even have to go to the app. But Dan, look at this. Natasha's name is still misspelled. I've told him five times it's N-I-T, not N-A-T. Ah, uh, that's probably my bad. I think you did mention that in the meeting. Uh, go ahead and click on Natasha there. And... Just click on her name here? Yeah, yeah. But it needs to be changed in the app. Yeah, go ahead, just trust me, trust me. Oh, it took me right to her page in the app. Look at that. So yeah, nice. go ahead and edit Natasha here. And uh, we'll talk about some other things this bot can do, which are kind of cool. So yeah, update you that. Just update. Now you might've heard right. a little chime there. Go back to the chat. I did, I have a notification. I'm assuming that's the bot. Hey, look at that. Yeah. Updated customer. Her name is finally spelled correctly. Look at me already adding value here at Tailwind Traders. Exactly. So you've kind of seen how the bots allow you to communicate and not only can they- I would buy this app immediately when, when I could write my name, my first name in the correct way because that's always written completely wrong. And by the way, please tell us where are you from? Which city, which country from this beautiful planet? So the developers in the company, I guess they just really customize the Lewis and the Q&A stuff so that we can go in and do these types of activities. A bot with artificial intelligence. What a time to be alive. But cool. Dan, I don't spend most of my day on my computer. I spend most of my day on my phone. Can I still talk with the bot there? You can, you can. In fact, uh, do you have Teams installed on your mobile app? I do. 
And in fact, um, believe it or not, I have it running and mirrored to my screen because that's just what I do every day. Is that just how you roll? It is. <laughs> All right, so here's my phone coincidentally mirrored to my screen and sized perfectly for a screen recording, just happens to be. So what do I do here? I just interact with the bot? You could interact with the bot if you wanted, yeah. Or uh, if you click on Teams again. Okay. And then uh, scroll on down back to that general channel and click on More. More. And there you go, Tailwind Trader CRM. Go ahead and give that a shot and this should load the app for you. Oh, I can access the app directly on my phone. How does that, but I didn't even install anything from the app store. It's just there? It is, it is. It's part of the, the Teams app that I mentioned earlier with the tab that developers can add. That just automatically carries forward to wherever you're running Teams. So it could be Teams in the browser, Teams on desktop, Teams in mobile. You can get to it pretty much anywhere. And I didn't even have to sign in. Clearly my favorite part. Oh, exactly. from the ocean side, Northern Germany. Uh, Hi, Sebastian. Schön, dass du da bist. We've only scratched the surface with what's possible as you bring your app into Teams, but you've seen that there's some very unique opportunities you can take advantage of as a developer and enhance the productivity of your users. And these are things that really you can only do if you bring your app into Teams. So to wrap things up, Burke, let's do a real quick recap of what we've gone through in this demonstration. Okay. So first off, we talked about how once your app is in Teams, you can leverage single sign-on, and that means the users can just be logged into Teams and they're ready to go. Now I know- Sebastian, SPO is Japan uh, online or St. Peter Ording? <laughs> yes, as a salesperson, I found it extremely convenient that I don't have to log into yet another system. If I'm logged into Teams, I'm automatically logged into the app. And even better than that was the fact that we were able to interact with the data via a bot. And that bot can understand what I'm saying naturally because of Azure Cognitive Services like Lewis, which is natural language processing, and Azure Q&A Maker, which is what allows us to get to the data in the application from the bot. And better yet, now we know the meaning to life. Very important, very important. And then finally, we talked about how once you have integrated your app into Teams, users can get to it through Teams on the desktop, in the browser, or even on mobile, and they don't have to install any additional download other than the Teams app itself. So it makes kind of a one-stop shop, you could say, to get to everything that the users need. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I got to be honest, Dan, all this seems kind of magical. Uh, so how do we know this isn't all just smoke and mirrors? What, you, you know, code or it didn't happen is what I'm saying. That's right. Well, fortunately, if you're interested in getting to the code for this and the setup procedures involved with it, uh, you can go to the GitHub link that you see on your screen, and that will have everything you need for the application that Burke and I walked through. Crazy. So with that, let me go ahead and turn things over to Christina. All right, well, that was fantastic, fantastic stuff from Dan and Burke. I'm going to bring in back uh, Todd and Isabella uh, to talk with us a little bit about what we just saw and, and some other things we can look forward to with developing with Microsoft Teams. Todd, let's go ahead and start with you. What are kind of your big takeaways from, uh, from what we just saw from our opening with, with Burke and Dan? Yeah, it's a cool demo. And what I love about what they showed there is I know a lot of us are in places where we have those line of business apps that are part of our daily lives that requires to go find a website, log in. And it shows how you can really simplify a lot of people's lives by bringing things into Teams and how you can go even further and really streamline the way someone works by going even deeper into that integration with things like bots and, and some of the things Dan and Burke showed off. So hopefully I think everyone got to see that it's a lot of different places you can integrate. That's teams by the way, a really down, cool microphone. Show you how to do what you just saw. So uh, a lot of fun content to come. But I also want to point out that what we saw there was in the context of a line of business app, but the same concepts apply if you're a startup and you have a SaaS app and you want to think about integrating that into Teams, or maybe you're a student and you want to build something for your organization or your learning institution. All of these concepts apply the same. And so if you have an idea for building a Teams app or you're thinking about building one, we want to help you. In fact, we've set up a forum where you can share with us a little bit about what you want to build so we can actually set up some time as the developer advocacy team to talk to you about your idea and help you out. So head on over to AKMS slash Teams App Consult, C-O-N-S-U-L-T, and give us a little bit of information and we'll reach out to you. We want to help you out. We want to help make your Teams app successful and hopefully guide you a little bit further down that path. Awesome. Awesome. So AKA.MS slash Teams App Consult. That's, That's fantastic. Uh, Isabella, what did you think about that? That was a pretty cool demo, right? 
it's really, really awesome. And I think just in general, we're really excited to see SSO coming out as well as one of the things that was highlighted there. Yeah. So Isabella, what is, what's the coolest app that you've seen developed for teams so far? Really hard question. I think in general, I love all of the apps that folks are building that address their really niche scenarios. So, you know, in education cases, how students can stay engaged and things like that. I personally love Kahoot. Um, it's an app that was actually first a standalone app and is now integrated into Teams. I, I use it for a lot of some of the internal onboarding um, programs that I help run. So that's, that's Please write in the chat window in the comments, which is your favorite app in Team Store, which are not by my, which are not published by Microsoft. So which third party app you like most? I actually think a lot of the watch parties today are using And tell me please why you like it. Great call out. It's a great app. It's a fantastic, fantastic. So I was gonna ask you, Isabella, we saw a lot of sort of core features in Teams in that demo, but uh, I know some of the people in today's live stream are experienced Teams developers. So for those who are a little more familiar with the platform, uh, what should developers know that's maybe new in the platform, something new they can check out to go even deeper with their app dev journey? Yeah, there are a lot of a lot of different areas that we're making investments in. I think just really in general, focusing on making sure that there are great tools for both professional devs and citizen devs. So um, the the new Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code extensions that help you build out Scaffold. The integration with Power Platform is really, really powerful and really helps folks get started building out apps quickly. I'm personally super excited about meetings extensibility, which is how you can start building apps for meetings. I think it it's, it's one of these ways that you can really see how apps can be fully integrated into what you're trying to do. And I've since we've released meetings extensibility, it's a feature that I've been using in probably every single meeting I have. I think in the next Christmas days, I really want to test uh, all the different meetings apps. So they are really, really huge. In the meeting while you're meeting with other people, the app's right there in that surface. Yep, there's you can that. you can access the app from the upper bar. And, you know, even in that polling, in that polling example, we did a virtual offsite the other day and we were using polls to kind of gauge sentiment while we were doing the offsite to, to make sure that all voices were heard. So that's a really, really great way that users can now interact. Ah, uh, yeah, very cool. That's awesome. So uh, you told us like what app is one of your favorites. You love Kahoot. What is what is an app that uh, that people you would you wish that someone would develop? Oh, great question. Um, now that we've released meetings extensibility, all I want is an app that will play elevator music into the meeting in that five minute silence before everyone actually starts talking and you're kind of sitting there and do you say something, do you not say something? I want to be able to just hit a button and start playing elevator music. Do, 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 do. Ah, I <laughs> love it. Along. I need the pan flute music. <laughs> uh, that actually, that would go well with the with the app consult, uh, right Todd? Like that, that's something yeah. that people should reach out and, and learn more yeah. about building. I think it's a great call out that there are all kinds of different apps you can build. It doesn't have to be just the line of business or the productivity scenario. I mean, people are spending their days and their time here. So elevator music app, sure, uh, you know, the, the sky's the limit, but send us those ideas. Let us help you out, help you figure out how to be successful. Uh, and I also want to say before we go back to kind of the next segment here and, and talking more about how you do this, that we know we can't teach you how to do all this in two hours. Uh, no one can learn and master topic that fast. So we have prepared a free learning course on Microsoft Learn that's aligned to all the content you're seeing today. So you can go self-paced, go through all these topics, learn the deep ins and outs that you need to know to be successful. Uh, and we created a challenge around that to incentivize you to go through that content. So it's a Teams Learn Challenge. And the first 35 people that complete the challenge will be uh, eligible to win Xbox Game Passes. So we're not above bribery. Uh, head on over there. Check out the Teams Learn Challenge, aka MS slash Teams Learn Challenge is where you can find it. It will go live right at the end of today's event. Uh, and it will give you a reason to go through that learning path, take what you've learned today, apply it, get hands on, and hopefully build that uh, elevator music app for Isabella here. So she has that app in her uh, her app catalog. Indeed, indeed. Fantastic stuff. Uh, check out that link, aka.ms slash Teams Learn Challenge. As Todd said, we are not above bribery. And now we're going to go into our next section from Aisha and Tommy. Check it out. Thank you, Christina. Wow, we just saw a great demo from Ben and Burke. Tommy, what do you think? Yeah, that was pretty cool. And it tells us a lot of possibilities with Teams platform. I hope that makes you want to build some apps too. Yes, I'm talking to you who are watching this right now. And thank you so much for tuning in. So how are y'all doing? I hope you've been enjoying this event so far. And we have light learners here to learn together with us. So 
Chloe. Yeah, but here's Brian Eno would be great for a elevator <laughs> music, see. lobby room now music. I know I can Definitely. Get stuff on top of that. Ooh, how about Anthony? I love the demo. It was awesome. I'm looking forward to learning more. Nice, nice. All right, cool. So in this segment, we're gonna show you the developer platform capabilities. I think Brian Eno, Brian Eno also did the Windows 7 starting sound, if I'm not completely wrong. And hi, I'm Aisha, and I'm Cloud Advocate 2 based in Dubai. Where are you all watching from? We have Lisa, Daniela, Luis. Hi, I'm Lisa, and I'm watching from Redmond, Washington. Hi, I am Daniela and I'm watching from Peru. Okay. Hi, I'm Louise and I'm watching from Germany. So nice. Hey, Louise. So, shall we get started? Tamami, I know that you were working on a series of Teams developer tutorials for beginners. I think you should be the best person to summarize what Teams developer platform lets you do. All right, yeah. Let's see. Um, you can send messages, which also trigger notifications. These messages can be in a rich format, like task modules and cards with inputs and buttons. And you can extend the Teams feature like search commands. Or you can use a full screen canvas to embed your web app. That's neat. By the way, do you remember we were discussing a long time ago how nice could it be building apps for meetings? Seems like it's available now. Yeah, you can build in-meeting apps too, and the feature is currently in preview. So it will be really exciting to see more apps on meetings. Yes, it will be awesome for sure. What about Teams developer platform capabilities? What kind of apps can we create with all these great features? All right, so we've got tabs for the full screen experience, bots for conversational tasks, and a messaging extension to let users invoke commands from UI. It also supports incoming and outgoing webhooks, so you can make teams to interact with the third-party apps and services. Okay, let me walk on the key capabilities with my drawings. So the first one is tabs, where you can display information in visual interface. So you can see there are tabs on top and you can add your own custom tabs here too. And clicking one of those, it displays a full screen view. Hey, by the way, we use these custom clock app in our team too. That's awesome. And our teammate Bob made it. It's quite useful in our team especially. Yeah, so the team clock is a good example. We can view everybody's time zones in a current day and time. It's useful because we are a globally distributed team. Yay. And some business analysis too. You might want to create a cool data visualization like this. The basically taps a web app embedded in an iframe in Teams client. It'd be nice to have dark mode too. I'm a dark mode person. <laughs> yeah, so Teams SDK does support dark mode and high contrast mode. So you should definitely add the feature to your app. Please tell us, I also dark mode person. Web developers, you can use your favorite frameworks like React or Vue, or even no frameworks at all. Just use that with Teams SDK to bind your web app to Teams. Yeah, so your tab is a web app. Um, you developers can also debug your web apps with browser dev tools, just like how you usually inspect your web app in an Edge or Chrome, however you like. That's right. Another capability I want to show here is bots. So bots can have a conversational interface between a user and a bot. Let's say a user says something like, hey, bot, and a bot replies maybe greet back and say hello <laughs> the user can make a command to the bot let's say make me a sandwich can bot really do that <laughs> not really maybe not making a physical food but can generate an order so i Order a pizza 
for you. And you can display some images or UI components here too. And maybe this pizza scenario is not so realistic, but you can create all kinds of automation in this compositional UI. So yeah, feel free to grab a drink, beer, pizza, slice of bread, sandwich. We offer Just feel at home here. Frameworks. And please bring me also a beer. Platform to build chatbots for web, mobile, and other platforms, including Skype. Also, third-party platforms like Twilio, Slack, and so on. And you can use a team-specific handler to create a conversational UX for teams. Also, you can make your bot smarter with cognitive services such as language understanding or QA maker, power of AI. Yeah, AI is super cool. And also, you can leverage Microsoft Graph API, which allows you to get in teams and user data, such as, well, user presence. Or you can combine with the newly released Graph to do skills on bot framework, so bots can remind users to do something. I like the way you think, Tommy. More people should think like you. Later, so stay tuned. Yeah, next one is messaging extensions. And this feature comes with two different types, search and action, and I'll explain search commands first. The command can be invoked by a user from two places, and one of them is a search box right here. Let's say the stocks app is already installed and when anybody can look up that you know ticker symbol like msft then enter and the result shows up in the drop down here microsoft and the 300 yeah i hope that's very optimistic <laughs> yeah <laughs> another place to invoke the app is the compose area so by clicking the app icon here, you get the pop over and you get the same app and you can enter a query. FFT. Yeah, then get the result right here too. Yay. The difference is that the result can be shared to the team. So you can press that button to Post a message, and then that can be, you know, displayed in message view right there. So this one must be different. It is action comment, right? Not search. Yep. So that's messaging extension, and that's action commands. So this command is invoked by a user from any one of these messages. Now, when a user hover a message, I get the little menu with emoji and all those things. So click that last one, dot, 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 that gives you a drop down menu. Then click more actions right there. That gives another drop down menu. And which, you know, there is names of apps that use that feature. So click one of those that makes some actions. Something like generating a report or something. And then, yes, the result can be sent as a reply in the thread of the original message if you want. So to build these features, the tech stack is actually the same as Bob's. They're just different presentations and interactions. Yes, and also Microsoft op uh, offers the open source adaptive cards. You can create UI snippets for web and mobile, and you can also use it with Teams app development too. Stay tuned for the next sessions to learn more about adaptive cards and Graph API. So it's always the next question when we get so excited about the technology, right? Where to get started, what to install. All right, yeah. So it's better to mention the Teams dev tools. To begin your new project, uh, you can use a command line tool or Teams toolkit. Um, they both gives you an app scaffolding. We also use App Studio to create an app manifest and let you install and distribute your app. 
you probably want to use ngrok for localhost tunneling during the development. But once you finish, you will need to deploy your app to, well, let's say, to Azure. Well, so you actually described very well. We have two different great tools. Developers can use any of them depending on their preference. Oh, yes. For example, your team generator is for developers who prefer to create apps with TypeScript. If you like CLI development, your team could be a good choice for you. Exactly, nice one. On the other hand, Microsoft Teams Toolkit is for developers who prefer to build Teams apps directly within Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. It's a new evolving extension. If you prefer visual guidance, Toolkit might be your choice. You can check the related links if you want to learn more about these tools and let's try to build apps using both of the options. What do you say? All right, so what are you going to build with these tools, Aicha? I'll create a tab using your Teams and a bot using Teams Toolkit. So we will get a chance to see both of the tools as well as both type of applications. So let's get started. I'll create a folder and call it Teams tab. Then I'll open it in Windows Terminal. I will type your Teams. I already installed the tool, so it should work. I'll choose the default name Teams tab. I'll create a subfolder for my solution. Then I'll choose the default tab Teams tab and default company name Contoso. Let's go for the latest stable version 1.8. Then I'll skip the partner ID part. Feature of the Teams uh, app can be any of the following, but for this demo, I'm just going to create a tab. Then I'll go for the default host name. You can change any of the following settings later, but for now. But what I would like to mention here is I really like this way of learning. So, so it's really enter entertaining. I yeah, I like it. Test framework. Please share with me. How do you like the first half an hour? Can add all of them later. Is it a good way of learning? It's it's the first time the ever Microsoft is offering this kind of service. Personal static as a type, and I'm going to skip this now. Then this will create my project. Once it's done, I'm just going to type code dots and I'll open my project in Visual Studio Code. There we go, code dot. Yay, so this is my project. All tabs are actually web apps, so this one is in TypeScript. Let's quickly run our tab. I'll open my terminal here and I'll go in my project folder, CD Teams tab, then I'm just going to run Gulp and Grog, sir. So now um, Ngrok is tunneling my localhost 2007. Let's just test our tab on Teams. I'll quickly go to Teams and I will sign in with my demo tenant. All right. So let's highlight here. So developers can get a free tenants from M365 developer program. It's a free program and great for testing and debugging. Definitely, I'm using one of those right now. So, okay, to test my tab, I will go and click three dots on the left-hand side menu. And I'm just gonna choose more apps on the bottom. I'll scroll down on the left hand side and choose upload a custom app for me and my teams. Under my project folder, there's a package folder. I'll choose this zip file and open it. On teams, I'll edit. And. Yep, there we go. Our tab is now running on teams. Yay! So it's done with your teams. Shall we move forward with Team Toolkit? All right, but Aija, before you start, where can we get the toolkit? 
Developers can get toolkit extension in Visual Studio Code under extensions part. Once it's installed, Teams icon will appear on the left-hand side menu. I'll just go ahead and click on it. Then I'll create a new Teams app. Ah. So to continue, I need to sign in so that when I create an app, it will automatically be added in my Teams App Studio. I will allow signing in. Then I'll be directed to capabilities. I'm going to choose bot and next. Then I'll give it a name, any name you like. And after that, I'll create a new bot registration under bot framework once it's done. So for everybody who just joined, we are watching here Microsoft Redmond uh, live stream for Microsoft Teams app development. I need to just learn with us, have a drink. Get some snacks for my project. There we go. Our bot project is created. After this point, it's all about following the README guidance. There we go. So first step is just checking dependencies. If we have Node.js, uh, Ngrok, or Enter 65 developer account. And the next step is setting up Ngrok. Before we move forward, Tom, would you like to explain why do we use Ngrok at all? Sure. Because Microsoft Teams is an entirely cloud-based, it requires all services to be publicly available using HTTPS endpoints. So to make your app work with Teams, you need to either deploy your app to the cloud server or create a local running instance that is externally accessible. So we can do that with Ngrok, which creates a URL for a port that opens locally. Yes, definitely. Thanks, Tommy. And now I'll show you how to work with Ngrok. Let's continue with our steps. I'm just going to copy this line and open my Ngrok. I already installed, so I'm just going to paste the script. Enter. OK, so. My Ngrok is tunneling 39.78. I'm just going to copy this URL. And after that, let's move forward. Next step is updating bot framework messaging endpoint. I'll click on bot section here. Then I'll allow sign in. in. After that, under existing bot registrations, I'll find out our bots. And if we scroll down on the right side, we will see bot endpoint address. I'm just going to copy my ngrok URL slash API slash messages. On the right side, once we see the green tick, that means we're done. Let's turn back to our documentation for the final step. Our final step is just build and run. I'm just going to type npm install first. And NPM starts. Awesome. Our project is running on localhost 3978, which we're tunneling. Let's go to Teams and test our bots. I will sign in with my demo tenant again. There we go. I'll go to three dots on the left hand side and I'll choose App Studio. This is my app studio. I'll go under manifest editor and here we go. This is my bot I created already. I'll click on it and you can see all of your bot details under app details. And if you scroll down on the left side, you will see bot endpoint URL and also bot ID and password. To test this, if you scroll down on the left, just click on test and distribute, install and add. This will direct us to our bot. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to type hello. And bot replies me, hi, my name. Mm -hmm. Then I will try something else. Hi there. And it just pops up with adaptive card with a button. Let's click. And it's again, hi, my name. 
So congratulations, our bot we build using Teams Toolkit is working on Teams too. Wow, that was great. Now you know what you can do with Teams platform and which tools to use to build apps. Are you all ready to build some amazing apps? We hope so. Stay tuned for the next sessions to learn more. Bye, right. ladies. Bye, so thank you so much for watching. And back to you, Christina. That was fantastic. I love that demo. I love that session, the CLI bit. Uh, really excited me. But next, we're going to kick over to a little bit of a break. We're going to see um, some videos from our friends uh, Chloe and some other people, and then we're going to come back and check in with our watch party. So see you in a bit. Hey, y'all. Chloe Condon here, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own personal office assistant in under 60 seconds using things around your house. That's right. We are crafting Clippy. I've only got a limited amount of time, so I'm going to get right into it. So I'm just starting out with this stuff. Karl Klammer, unser bester Freund. Everybody's Clippy is going to be different, right? I feel like everybody's Clippy has its own personality. Mine's going to be kind of sassy. It's going to have kind of this arm out like this. Now, if you're anything like me, you just have a caboodle full of eyeballs. <laughs> so you can pick an eyeball that suits the Clippy that you're making. You can have classic Clippy. Or if you're like me, maybe you want to do something a little bit more sassy with eyelashes. Oops, looking a little tired here, pre-coffee Clippy. And that, everyone, is how you make your own Clippy. Put this baby in the oven for a couple minutes and voila, you can have some Clippies just like these earrings you see right here. Happy coding, everyone. A lot of people really seem to underestimate Tasmania and see us as this tiny little island away from the rest of the mainland. My direct team's actually based in Melbourne, but being able to create group chats and have that visual connection through video calls has helped us tremendously, especially this year. In 2020, a lot of organisations had a really rapid deployment of Teams and were forced to learn on the fly. We put together a series of short and snappy Teams tips and tricks videos, which have been super well received. One of the most popular videos was how to add Snapchat filters to your Teams video calls. One of the main platforms we use for our internal communication is LiveTiles Reach. Which actually sits as an app within By the way, a great recommendation is if you want to learn more about uh, power apps, Tommy, who just uh, posted a few things here, is currently having an advanced calendar together with Stefan Riedel. And you can find everything from the calendar here. So this is my number one uh, favorite, how do you call it in English? I have no idea. Write it in German. Advanced calendar power apps. I'm Christina Warren, and if you're just joining us, this is our great event just all about, you know, building apps with Microsoft Teams. And I'm going to go now to um, one of our virtual watch parties that we've got all over the world. I'm bringing in Martin, who is with the uh, Dutch Information Workers User Group. Martin, how are you? Very well, thank you. Hi, Christina. Uh, and nice to see everyone in your user group. Uh, so uh, what, what time is it where, uh, where you are right now? We are based in the Netherlands and uh, it's um, well about a quarter to 7 p.m. right here. Amazing, amazing. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, so uh, tell me a little bit about your user group and tell me about how you use Microsoft 365 and, and Microsoft Teams. Oh, absolutely. Um, so we are the Dutch Information Worker User Group and we cover basically everything that's Microsoft related when it comes to collaboration. So there's a lot of SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, Power Platform, and we organize user group meetings um, about uh, once every two months, uh, online these days, obviously, but uh, they used to be in person as well when that was still possible. And we cover everything from a development perspective to an IT admin and, and business perspective as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. And what's uh, what, what feature would you say that you are either most looking forward to coming to Microsoft Teams or uh, has been the most useful to you that's, that's happened with Microsoft Teams that's come out in the last few months? Oh, I, th I think breakout rooms is definitely one that we've been anticipating on for a long time, but also the very small features, the one that was just released with the, the five minute warning uh, when, uh, when a meeting is going to end, the, the, the features like that, I, I really like those. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And I, I love that uh, your user group is, is watching and helping us learn together. All of you at home who are learning with us, we definitely want to hear your feedback. And now I'm going to pass things off to Barnum and Valdrick, who are going to talk to us more um, about um, embedding your apps with Microsoft Teams. 
Hey, thanks, Christina. And hello, everyone. Uh, we, you know, we ha you have joined us for quite a few uh, minutes already, and we're really excited that you're learning together with us so far. I'm Barnum Bora, and I lead Dev Advocacy here in, for uh, Teams and Graph here at Microsoft. And yes, uh, I'm joining you via the power and magic of, of Teams um, from right here down under here in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, today, I'm uh, being joined by a very special, extremely European, very Dutch partner in crime, all the way from Amsterdam uh, in the Netherlands. Make some in-meeting noise uh, for senior dev advocate, former MVP, and Microsoft 365 developer community extraordinaire, Mr. Waldeck Mastercars. Hi, everybody. With that, I mean, I have nothing else to add. Other than that, that we have brought here a group of folks who want, want to learn with us. So I'd like to give, give them a chance to say a few words about who they are, where they're watching from, and we'll take it from, from there. Uh, cool, I'll go first. My name is Donovan Brown. I live here in Houston, Texas, and I am a principal cloud advocate here at Microsoft. Hi, I'm uh, Julie Turner. I'm a partner with Simpraxis Consulting, and I am in Southern New Hampshire in the United States. My name is Abel, Principal Cloud Advocate and DevOps Lead at Microsoft, and I live in Seattle, Washington. Hi, I'm John Papa, and I'm also a Cloud Advocate, and I do a lot of web development out there and storytelling, and I currently live in Orlando, Florida. Hey, awesome. Thanks for the intro, learners. I hope uh, you're in for the ride with us, uh, and, and everyone out there who's watching, uh, thank you for joining us once again. So, uh, you know, Waldeck, uh, our learners have already, you know, they've had a cool chat with uh, Isabella, who's from the Teams product team, uh, and Dan and Burke, you know, at the top gave us a, a great demo uh, on a complex enterprise app. Uh, that's a scenario that boosts productivity for a sales team uh, in a CRM style app. Uh, we also just before this heard from uh, Tomomi and Aicha, uh, who gave us a cool rundown of uh, what a Teams app actually is um, and what are the nuances and the different types of areas of development? You know, you can try and people uh, can try out. Um, but a little learner buddy uh, told me that they really want to know what uh, we are really going to talk about and show today. So why don't you give us a bit of an essence of, of what we're really going to talk about for the next few minutes uh, in, in our segment? Sure. So in a, in a gist, right, like we learned, like there are multiple types of apps you can build for teams. You can build a bot, you can build a tab. Right, so in this segment, we'll talk about how you would bring existing web app, bring that into Teams as a tab. So why don't we uh, kind of uh, dive into it straight away, Waldek? Like, you know, where would somebody, uh, you know, let's assume uh, we, we take the app that we saw an example of earlier on, you know, um, and, you know, both you and I, and, and I'm sure a lot of people online, um, you know, have, have built an app like that or something similar in the past. So. Where would somebody start? Where? Why is uh, why is it important to think about a few things that matter when you're building for Microsoft 365 platform, and and the opportunity of reaching 115 million daily active users? How would somebody start? Where where would they go? Right. So I guess there are a few a few angles from which you you can start, and the one that I choose often is auth. Like auth, like we all know it, right? So. Auth is probably the hardest part of that because until you can authenticate, you can't really do anything. Like none of these APIs are anonymous, right? So until you can connect to Microsoft Graph. Well, Jeff Cheaper started here, I think, and kicked something off, Tommy. Like you need to authenticate, right? So that is the first step you need to do. And for some, like some folks like, well, so is it is it harder to do a regex, compute time zones, or do auth, right? So like, Floor, Corazon, buenos dias. You get right but it it is that very first step that empowers you to really make use of the accounts you already do for um that you already have for work as opposed to having to have like post-it notes around your screen with different credentials for every app you use right so that is the first step like if you have an app and you want to bring that into microsoft 365 i would say the first step ensure that you can use your work account to sign into your app like, look, I, I think uh, that itself makes me excited because I think uh, uh, I've I've sort of uh, uh, fallen uh, into the trap of uh, 
building some, uh, you know, fake uh, username, password databases just to test things out. So you're telling me that I've been not following best practice for a long time. So Waldeck, uh, you know, we've we've seen uh, uh, a few demos about the app before. So um, where where should somebody start? I know how. Is, let's assume. Uh, I was working with Floor in my Yammer customer success team a couple of years ago when I was at, at Microsoft. And now she's living somewhere, L, yeah, around LA. Should enable when they, oh, you know, try and bring that app to Microsoft 365 or Teams. Uh, let's talk about that. Let's uh, let's let's see it. Absolutely. So when 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 you have an 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 app, right? I mean that app is not available to everybody anonymously, right? Because it has access to your customer data orders, right? So there's always this first step: you have to authenticate. So how do you, Barnum, uh, solve auth? Like how do you build auth in your apps? Uh, I mean, you know, that's a funny question because uh, I, I remember from a conversation we were having before that. I've been not been doing, uh, you, you've been pointing at, greatly pointing out that I've not been doing best practice where, you know, for, for random tests, I've been generating a username and password and putting that in a JSON file and trying to do random things. You know, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I used to be a machine learning guy and that's, that's how I did a lot of things. So can you show me what the best practice needs to be and why Microsoft 365, why the Microsoft graph? Why Teams, uh, you know, auth and why Active Directory is really where I should be investing more time in, and and what our uh, developers really get as an inherent uh, capability within the platform. Sure. So it's like whenever you build a web app, like you probably have exactly what you see, see now on a screen, right? You have a login page that asks you to provide either login uh, name or or email and password, right? And then you enter that and like you will with that authenticate to the app so you will get access to all info that you have stored in the app in our case customers and orders and in in this case like you need a separate set of credentials for this app and chances are that for every other app you use you will have different set at the end of the day your monitor is filled with post-its or like december 2020 underscore one exclamation mark you know so like you try to like create more credentials that you can keep in mind for for different apps right and that just at scale doesn't work plus it's it just doesn't make sense because you already have one account you have one account that's used for your outlook sharepoint onedrive and teams so why not use the same account to log in into your line of business apps right so that is exactly cites me tell me more of Exactly, exactly. So like for, for me, when you think about bringing your LOB apps to Microsoft 365, like that is the first step. Ensure that users can use their work account and sign in with the same account that they use everywhere else into your LOB app. And the experience is very much the same, right? So you come here to a login page, like, and you see a login option but there is no more login form in, in here because at this stage, you're, you're, you as a dev, you're not building the auth mechanism by yourself. You don't need to have database with usernames and passwords, hashes, password recoveries, reminders, and whatnot. Like all of that is going away because now you choose to buy into or to actually use Azure Active Directory, which you already have, have a, available. Right, so in here, imagine that we refactored this app and we want to use AAD, as it's called for short, to authenticate in this app with your work account. Right, so here you will click login and in here you see the login form, but that login form is coming from Azure Active Directory. This is not a login form that you would build in your app. You get this for free, right? And in there, you enter the same email that you use for work password that belongs to it, right? And with that, you get immediate access to this app, right? So you can, you still have access to customers, orders and whatnot, but none of the off part you need to build by yourself. And that saves you a lot of time, not to mention you get for free things like multi-factor off, like the ability to also authenticate with your phone or things like access that um, um, policy, right? That your company can say, you can only access this app from a laptop that we as a company own and not from your own, 
right? So these are all the different things you get for free. You know, this, uh, uh, every time I speak to uh, the uh, friends uh, who work in different companies or building apps very much like this, and I know you, we've talked about this before, but every time I say that, hey, um, you know, using Azure Active Directory, which, you know, for, for those of you who don't know, underpins pretty much all of the authentication for um, pretty much everything that Microsoft does, especially in the cloud. Um, and it's almost the, the, the default active, the, the default identity management, um, you know, platform that a lot of enterprises across the globe use. So the ability for a startup or anybody who's building an app or, uh, or uh, an ISV uh, to actually just quickly just integrate with Azure Active Directly directory and utilize the the baseline capability of identity and access management that automatically makes them able to plug in directly into the enterprise identities that exist or, or for millions and millions of people who work in these large and uh, you know different size companies that is a just give me five minutes i will go and get a beer i will be right back with you uh, a lot of doors for these companies as well so this is what really excites me and i think you know devs who are watching us are watching this um, should definitely go and try and and make sure that their apps are able to quickly plug into an enterprise identity graph. Absolutely, and I guess maybe maybe this is also a time for us to ask folks that we, that we have have with us like, what kind of like when you build apps, do you build build your own auth or do you try to tap into systems that are already there? Well, I, I guess it all depends on what yeah. type of app you're, you're writing, right? I mean, if you're if you're writing a standalone web application that's not tied to your organization, then you're definitely going to have to retrofit this to that scenario if you're going to bring it into Teams. But uh, it all depends on my target audience. If I'm working for the enterprise, I'm probably going to go as close to uh, AAD or some type of centralized auth as I can get. If I'm standing up my own, I don't know, selling widgets on the on, as I moonlight, yeah. then I'll, obviously I'm not going to. I'm going to use forms authentication and, and enroll it myself. Yeah. Cool. So to yeah, most of the applications at large enterprises will, you already have got some kind of authentication store, as Donovan was saying. So a lot of places that I've worked or consulted at or taught with, uh, they, it's not optional to use a new auth store. You have to integrate with whatever is there. And quite often it's it's AD. Yeah, thanks, John uh, and Donovan. I mean, that's, that's exactly what... Uh, you know, I think uh, uh, it excites uh, devs when we speak about this, even uh, um, and and then when we talk about bringing this into Teams, that's where we want to go next. You know, Baldek, uh, we've j just discussed why it's uh, it's such a huge multi force multiplier to be able to plug in, integrate, and utilize the identities and access management and all the policies that already exist, and basically the goodness of identity management, mm -hmm. um, and 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 utilize that in an app. But then now, you know, how do we sort of bring that in uh, into an experience where the users, you know, teams, you know, 115 million daily active users. This is pretty much well and truly becoming the operating system of work for a lot of us. We're only able to do something like this or we're conversing across time zones, uh, across global multi-thousand mile distances, primarily because of an environment like this. So, you know, when somebody talks about bringing their app into teams, what, where would they start? How do they go? How do they go about it, um, and and integrate with the goodness of Teams? So let, let's talk about that a little bit, Walter. The first step, the easiest step to bring your app is to build it as a, as a tab because that brings the whole app as 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 is with as little work as you can do, right? And that will make the whole app available within the context of Teams, right? So here, like what you see now now on the screen is like a channel discussions in Teams directly. And here on the left hand side, we now launch our app that has been exposed into team. You see now on the screen that we have access to all customers. We can view orders. So we have access to the whole app, but we are still in teams. People don't need to go into a separate bookmark, browser tab that they have, switch back and forth, no matter where they are in teams, right? Because like we now chose to build this app as, as personal teams app. And that means that that app is available to users, no matter where in Teams they are, whether they are in files or or channels, they can quickly access this app directly from the left rail 
and open that directly within the context of their work, meaning less switching back and forth. And also, again, so guys, get some drinks. Don't uh, dehydrate. <laughs> they don't need to to authenticate. And we will go more in depth about what you have to do exactly to have that single sign-on experience for your app, exposing Teams to make it really seamless for people to use your app. Yeah, I have a question and about. I about the way that you're oh, sorry go ahead it. yeah you, so you have a web application that you're going to port but we're still going to leave it as a web application for those outside of teams so right now i'm noticing that there's a logout button on there is there a way for me to know if i'm running inside the context of teams or if i'm running in the web proper so that i can maybe change the theme that i'm using or, or remove some of the chrome that i have because i don't necessarily need a logout button if i'm actually sso inside of teams right Yes, that makes sense. Like that, that is a perfect thing that you would actually do, right? So we use that to uh, do SSO in, in Teams. So if you open this app in context of Teams, we know it, right? So we can tap into your identity that is exposed to, to us through Teams. If you don't, don't use this, this app in context of Teams, if you just go to a URL bookmark because you are not in Teams, well, then there is no context of Teams and that that, that, that is given to you, like you can access that in your app. And as you say, you can adjust the UI, UX of your app based on the fact whether you're, you are inside Teams or not. Awesome. So are you saying, uh, uh, Waldek, uh, basically uh, the fact that we're, we, we enable uh, the ability to use single sign-on through Teams where it's a fully seamless experience, you, yeah, you can actually get rid of the Chrome that doesn't make sense here um, and, and, and just utilize the be best bits of the app that really makes sense in the context of that user or that pane or that tab, right? Exactly. Actually, uh, come to think of it, like, you know, f folks who are watching, like, you don't necessarily have to actually bring the whole app into Teams. You know, we there are a lot of different parts or different types of apps that were discussed earlier on and you can hear more about later, like it may make sense just to bring a, a bot experience here. It may make sense just to build adaptive cards into chats, which allow people to interact with parts of an app or parts of a database or parts of an interaction in a, in a, in a full on scenario of, of building a solution for a business outcome. So what we're showing here is how to integrate a, a, a very visual application in a, in a, in a tab like environment. Um, I just want to change gears a little bit. Um, you know, uh, we've talked about this before and, you know, and every time I speak to someone who, you know, hasn't hasn't experienced teams development so far, I tell them that, hey, you know what, you can make your existing web app really easily available on teams through something uh, which is actually quite trivial to actually do, but very powerful in a sense, uh, which is just having a manifest that gets uh, it has all the parameters and gets uploaded and then you're suddenly your web app which lives on a browser uh, for most people who are using it uh, uh, in their browsers suddenly becomes a teams app and is available on on devices with teams auth and everything so can we just talk about the manifest and the power of it a little Code. bit so basically in other words so that was like a really wrong, long preamble to say to ask like show me code <laughs> all right cool right so the app you have seen like Hey Alex, good to see you. Tomorrow, nine o'clock in the evening, Central European time. Alex and Ragnar, Microsoft Teams News. Tune in, check YouTube. We're gonna have a pre-Christmas party. Angular web app with all its um, controllers, mo modules. There's also a little bit it API there, but this is just like nothing more than an Angular app, right? Using built with tooling that you would know in Angular. And then we have this another bit that, that we have added specifically for teams. And the key part is Barnum, you mentioned the manifest. So, so the manifest is a file that, that describes the shape of your app and says, okay, so this is my app. It has a name icon and it has either tabs or bot and whatnot. So these, these are the different things that you would include in manifest. And since it's just a file, like you could add that in VI or Vim. I never can, can remember how to exit it, so I don't. I stay away from that. Um, but there's there, there's also tooling that 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 we offer, right? So we have Teams Toolkit for VS and VS Code. 
we have yo teams right that that allows you to use the same experience that you would build that you would use to create any other new web app um so so developers not actually building this from scratch right so there's what, what the experience is pretty we, much yeah, hey, we you know, here's that. my app yeah and and we have tooling that really enables you to like generate what is the wrapper that makes that uh, app pretty much behave as an inherent extension of the capabilities of teams. So it, it's not a jarring experience to the user, right? Absolutely, right. And we have tooling that, that goes all the way from command line that you might know from from other apps to vi through more uh, um, um, wizard-based experience that you would visually go through, follow step by step, and then you end up with a, a working manifest and an app. Cool. Um, Wallach, again, uh, in uh, just changing gears a little bit for folks uh, like myself, you know, who are stuck at home in lockdown, you know, this uh, this uh, whole 2020 has been a very tough year and we've not actually uh, been able to meet as a team. We work across the globe and it's not it's been quite challenging. So one of the things that, uh, you know, we've tried to do, obviously, at Microsoft is to make our collaboration software as as real as possible and try and uh, replicate the the same experience as trying to be in a team as, in in a room in the same room and collaborate as much as we can and you told me that the best collaboration uh, environment that uh, you, one can actually work in is in front of a whiteboard um, so in that notion i know there's something new that the team's um, uh, product team has launched which uh, some of it has already gone live and some of it's coming live very soon which is the uh, meetings extensibility. So we're not going to show meetings extensibility today, but uh, let's talk about meetings extensibility a little bit, Waldeck. To me, there is nothing better than having the ability to stand together with someone next to a whiteboard and chalk and, and talk, right? Like draw things because I think visually, I think in pictures. So I, I need to see things to really grasp uh, uh, grab them and like, Typically, up until now, like you would have a call with somebody and you would talk about things, but then like you would draw something else where you would try to share screen where somebody will like kind of draw stick figures in paint. Like that, that doesn't work, right? So like, what if we can improve that experience? And so and basically, you're saying that somebody who's building an app today, uh, they could build an app which uh, could be a web app in itself, could be a Teams tab app, but you can actually go into a Teams meeting and attach an app to a meeting where instead of doing a screen share and showing somebody what you're doing on a sort of a dumb video screen, you're actually interacting live with a rich app, right? Absolutely. And that app. So imagine our CRM. Like with that, you will get access to, to orders and everybody can interact with them live, right? So if you do a change, I can do the change too. I don't, don't need you to tell you like, Barnum, can you go a little left? No, no, the other left. Like, can you move this or like, no, so we can, we can, we can truly collaborate in a meeting on the same data. And for a part, like imagine that these apps are powered by fluid framework, right? Like, like framework that truly are, allows real time collaboration. So I have a question. Um, you were sort of saying that you could have these apps be in multiple different places. So you're saying you would use this manifest to define all the different places where your app could then show up. So if your app, uh, could be used in a meeting or could be a tab or might be better off as a personal app. You can just configure multiple different entry points right in this manifest. That is exactly right. So inside a manifest, you, you create a manifest for your app and in there you, 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 you can list all the different shapes in which your, your app is exposed into teams. So as you said, it can be a tab, it can be bot meeting extension or an app that is available in meetings. So all these different places you would then list inside manifest. This is the beauty of actually parameterizing so much of it and, and making it available in a manifest, right? So um, one of the first fluid apps was actually, by the way, Project Mocha Outlook Spaces. And one of the next is going or is also the new Yammer experience, fully based on fluid. Um, and and being able to collaborate in a meeting live, you know, this this is what excites me about this, you know. Personally, you know, we do a lot of meetings here at Microsoft and I'm sure everybody watching does too many meetings already. So what uh, what excites me about this is basically we don't have to have meetings about what we did in the past. So the agenda is not about, you know, reviewing the past or planning the future. 
is the agenda could actually be about getting stuff done in the present and, and actually doing things together. And that's, you know, in the in the interest of learn together, I think it's about build and do together as well. And that's what sort of really excites me about this in meeting extensibility capability that's coming to Teams. Um, so Wadek, uh, you know, uh, we're at uh, sort of uh, at time with, with our segment. So any closing thoughts on this uh, that, that, that you have that you want the learners to take away? Absolutely. So I would encourage everybody to give this a try. Like if you have an 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 app, right? No matter if it's Hello World or if it's CRM or or anything else you might have built in the past, like really give it a a a, a try. Try to have that app show up in Teams because the moment you will see it, you will start thinking about what are the different things you could do more more with that because now your app is available to users where they already are. And we have a learning pad that will take you step by step, like ex explaining you the basics, like how you build different apps, what, uh, what you can do, all the way to SSO and the very detailed uh, things you have to do for, for us. So I would really encourage you, give this a, a try. And then when you do, tell us back what you think of it, where, where we can, can um, um, improve. Cool. Uh, so uh, for those of you interested, if you want more information about what we shared in, in today's uh, uh, session, uh, you can go to aka.ms slash learn together, um, which is also the site for uh, this particular uh, uh, event. But also if you want to learn about that learn path, which Waldeck was speaking about, where we really go through in, in depth and teach you how to actually get started and how to get to an outcome of actually having your uh, your your first Teams app ready to go, then you can go to aka.ms slash dev apps for Teams uh, and actually go and try it out. So I encourage you, as Waldek said, uh, to go try it out. Uh, and thank you learners for, and thank you everyone for, for joining us today. Um, and I wanna at this point throw back to the studio, back to you, Christina. Thank you so much, Barnum and Valdek, for that great presentation on embedding your web app into Teams. Next up, we have a fantastic presentation from Bob and Rabia about how you can make your Teams app part of your day. Over to you guys. Well, thanks, Christina, and hi, everyone. My name is Bob German, coming to you today from Boston, Massachusetts. And I think a lot of you probably know my colleague, Rabia Williams, who hails from Brisbane, Australia. We're both cloud developer advocates at Microsoft and really excited to be part of this program. Thanks, Bob, for doing the intro for both of us. Hey, we have some uh, live learners here with us, so please introduce yourselves and tell us where you're from. Hi, I am Cassie Brevu. I am a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft, and I am based in Minnesota. Hello, everyone. My name is Maxime Rouillet. I am a cloud advocate at Microsoft as well. Uh, I am located in the magnificent city of Montreal. Hey everyone, my name is Cecil Phillip and I am also a cloud developer advocate here at Microsoft and right now in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Hi everyone, this is Hamida Khatri. I am a Microsoft Student Learn Ambassador and I'm currently doing my PhD. I'm here learning about how this uh, app development works uh, in Microsoft Teams. Okay, so in this segment, we're going to deep dive into some of the app capabilities that we saw earlier. Um, and I have this pressing question, Bob. Um, I, I saw Tamomi in HS segment where they're uh, talking about the Teams Toolkit and Human Generator in order to, uh, there are like two tools you can use to build application for Teams. <laughs> And I was wondering, um, and I'm sure the developers here also agree with me, what if I already have an application? Do I have to go back there and rewrite the code or use these tools in order to bring them to Teams? A great question. And usually the answer is no, you can um, usually don't have to rewrite your existing application. In fact, the architecture of Teams makes it easy to reuse your existing application in many ways. So I'm not sure um, if you've seen this architecture diagram before, but this is the Teams architecture. Teams itself is really a brilliant facade on top of all of the different services in Microsoft 365. And so you can just add your services to that. This whole thing was designed for the cloud. So as long as you have a web page on, say, the internet anywhere, or a REST service that implements a bot anywhere on the internet, and we can reach that, 
um, you can actually reuse that functionality inside of Teams. Now, Teams just needs to know where is the web page, where is the web service, um, and that kind of thing. And that's where that manifest comes in that you've seen um, a couple of the other presenters already talking about. Manifest tells Teams how to stitch your application into the UI. That's great. Um, so, uh, Waldick and Barnum took us through um, Teams capabilities, and in a few minutes, I'll be taking you through messaging extensions. Uh, but, uh, folks, we have to jump into Bob's brain because he knows a lot about bots. Uh, do you love bots, Bob? I do. I really love bots. I think what really intrigues me about them is um, that they support natural language. So, in a way, they're the closest um, user interface to human to the actual human experience. The thing is, of course, bots are really, a bot is really just a user interface. So um, it is worth remembering that even though bots are really cool, you shouldn't have a bot just because they're cool. Make sure that you're solving the user's needs in the easiest way for them. So if it's easier for the user to click a tab and just see some information at a glance, rather than ask your bot questions to gather the information, the users are gonna want the tab. Right. Um, so yeah. keep in mind the advantages of bots, um, an intuitive user experience, uh, being able to face an ambiguous situation and just ask the bot for something, uh, working where users already are, is such as Microsoft Teams. Uh, and it's interesting that bots also have a self-generating history. So that chat that they leave behind can actually be useful if you use it correctly. And um, I think we'll show, we'll both be showing a couple examples of that as well as um, kind of small screen support. So another thing that you might or might not be aware of is that um, Teams apps can have different application scopes. So I'm sure you've seen this in the demos already. Um, an app can run in a Teams channel uh, or in a group conversation, in which case the audience for your app is a group of people. And you want to be mindful of that when designing your app. Then apps can also have a personal scope in which your app is accessed by individual users. And that's a great place to provide a summary or to uh, notify users about something kind of, you know, specific to them. This distinction become, is especially important in the area of bots, which is why I bring it up here because, well, maybe it's better if I just show you an example. Imagine that I am a consultant and I am uh, walking out to my car after a long day of consulting work and um, I go into Microsoft Teams and I'm gonna build my hours using this consulting bot. So all I have to do is ask for what I want. So for everybody who just joined, we are watching here Microsoft Redmond event about Microsoft Teams app development. And, and please share, share here in the comments, where are you from, from which country, city? So I'm very curious very to know who you are. What I want, and I used the phone's speech to text there, which is built into most phones today. And the bot is responding just to make sure that it got everything right. And there we are, I'm done. Right, so um, I have a question. So what if the user leaves out some key information? Do they have to actually follow a command to invoke a bot? Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's a really good point because um, you know that's in a way the difference between a command line and a bot. Because a command line, you have to learn it and if you don't get the command right, you get an error message, and then you kind of have to fix your errors. That's no fun, right? So watch what happens if I leave out some information. Um, so I worked on a project. I didn't give it any information about what project. And now it's going to ask me, what project do I want to build? Turns out there's two Contoso projects. So it's going to disambiguate which one. And I can answer colloquially the first one. Or I can say, um, when did I deliver them? Last Tuesday, right? I, I don't have to remember, go look up what date it is. We have a computer here. It can figure out the dates, right? And now it's finally got all the information. That's a really, really good use case. I worked as a consultant for 15 years. I know what I'm talking about. It doesn't work so well in a uh, group conversation. So here I am in a team. And the first thing you might notice is that I have to at mention the bot to get its attention. And the reason for that is because uh, otherwise the bot would see everything that we said to each other in the team. And um, 
it would be really confusing for everyone. So I said, consulting bot, add Alice to Contoso. So I'm trying to add somebody to my project. And the bot comes up with this handy little card. So it's gotten as much information. Yeah, as it's as interesting, challenging, but also can be a little bit concerning, it Tommy. It knows Alice, but it doesn't know which Alice. And it knows Contoso, but it doesn't know which Contoso project. And then all these other details are just easier for me to fill out here on the screen. Um, in the group conversation, if I had a back and forth discussion of all this with the bot, um, it would be really awkward. It would take a really, it would fill up pages of discussion and lose kind of the track of what the group was discussing. So instead, I'm just going to drop this confirmation card in place so that everybody on the team knows that Alice is joining our project and I don't have to remember to send out an email or do some other form of out of band notification. Oh, that's that's really cool. So we saw a bot um, adapting itself differently in a one on one chat and in a group chat. Um, sounds like a lot of people we know in real life. Yes, exactly. All right. So what other ways can we improve our application in teams? Well, the other big thing that I like to talk about is to use Azure Active Directory in the Microsoft graph. Now, let me be clear, you don't have to use them. But um, if you have your own auth system, you can certainly use that. In, there's a pop-up mechanism in Teams for tabs where you can put your own login page in the pop-up and pass back to your tab running in an iframe some information that it needs for security. And the bot framework has an OAuth dialog. So if you have an OAuth compliant um, service, you can actually get the bot to log the user in. The problem is this isn't such a great user experience. It gets your app going quickly, but um, users now have to log in a second time to your app. And it's actually worse for the team owner who might be the person deciding what apps to use. The team owner has to make sure everybody in the team has a login to your app. And then they have to, every time somebody at, uh, joins or leaves the team, they need to update whatever permissions inside of your app. So imagine that somebody leaves the company, maybe under not the best circumstances. Do they really remember? Does the team owner really remember to go in and remove them from all the information that's in your app? Um, that could become a real compliance problem. So single sign-on and authorization based on the team's membership is a huge benefit to usability. And then I think the best is if you also now use that Azure AD integration to call the Microsoft Graph and bring in information um, from what the user is doing every day in Microsoft 365. So let me show an example. This is a tab that's being used by a group of people who are uh, doing a lot of field service visits. I'm logged in as Katie, and you can see that when I went into this tab, I didn't have to do another login. I was single signed in, and it knew who I was, and it's showing my uh, field service visits for the day. So I can also look around and see what my teammates are doing. And uh, if I click on one of the items, it's actually going to show me all the information I need to deliver this field service visit. And what's interesting is some of this information is in the app and some of it is in Microsoft 365. So all the documents, contracts we have with this customer, photos from on site, those are in Microsoft 365. The calendars are coming from 365 all through the Graph API, whereas all the other information is actually the app. Users don't want to think about where is this information. They want to think about how do I get my job done? And now Katie has one place to go for everything about this field service visit. Now, she notices that her appointments are kind of close together. She's not sure if she can get to that second one on time. So she's going to ask for some help, and the app actually will um, send a message into the Teams channel um, when she types that. Now here I am. Now I can click on this deep link and it'll bring me back into the correct team, the correct channel, the correct tab, and even the correct field service visit so that I can check out this uh, work that, that Katie has asked for some help with. That's super cool. How does that deep linking work? Can I take a sneak peek at your code? Would you mind? No, actually, I'd love to show off the code. So um, the code is really pretty simple. Uh, here we are in the main part of the app, and I'm using the Teams JavaScript SDK to get at the Teams context. 
And out of there, and some of this isn't on the screen, but out of there, um, I'm getting the group ID, which is the same as the team ID, is also called a Microsoft 365 group, the channel ID, the entity ID, which uniquely identifies this tab, and the sub-entity ID, which apps can use for anything they want to. So that's where I'm passing in the appointment information. And the only other thing I need is the team's app ID, which is the app ID that goes in the team's manifest. So now here's the code when somebody clicks the, um, the button to send that message that constructs that deep link URL. And so it's kind of, we'll post a link to the documentation on this um, with the show notes in the Learn Together website. So you don't have to try to memorize this, but you can see all that information is in the deep link. And now in order to send it into Teams, it's really easy. It's a, just a graph call. And so here you can see what that looks like to send a message into the channel. And that's it. It's pretty straightforward. Super cool. So thanks, it was a great question. And now I have a question for Rabia. I mean, deep links are one way to save time for users. And I know you've been doing a lot of work with messaging extensions. Um, can messaging extensions save time for users too? Oh, heaps. Um, so let me just go into uh, our messaging extensions demo as well later on to show you how, uh, how easy that is. Uh, let's see a uh, before scenario. We've got um, here, um, Karen and Adil are two recruiters and they are having a conversation of getting information about a candidate. Um, and what's happening here is just a plain conversation, no messaging extension, nothing fancy. Um, Adil has to go to a HR system and bring out information, copy it from uh, some system and then type in format, etc. So you mean somebody had to copy and paste all that information from the application? That sounds like an awful lot of work, kind of a waste of time. It is. And there are two things that could be improved here. Now, Karen did not have to go to another person to get information from a HR system if HR system lives within Teams. So you could bring that application and integrate into Teams, get the information um, and present it in a, a nice way. And then don't know about you, Bob, but for me, um, as soon as I see notification of millions of messages in a channel, I look at the first one that's presented well, formatted well, etc. So. Uh, that there are two things that could be improved. Now I'll show you the other scenario where messaging extensions can help you uh, find information uh, and also present to you for getting that extra interaction or attention from your uh, teammates. So let's go to uh, this demo again. Uh, we've got the HR system. Um, we have hey, are you still alive? Please tell us how you feel. Is it interesting for you? Good investment of time? Here we have the talent box to do that. We Tired. 30 minutes left, countdown. And here I'm showcasing a search-based uh, messaging extension. There are two types. I think these uh, were already touch-based by uh, Tumomi and Aicha. Um, but yeah, here it is. I have my candidate information. It has brought back a nice looking card. Uh, there are buttons that you can click, schedule an interview with this candidate or see uh, the feedback. Uh, so it's pretty clever. And you can see here another baby form, uh, you know, you could fill out and probably even have integration with uh, Outlook. Uh, so you could uh, schedule that meeting right away with the candidate. Now, how useful is that? Oh, that's really awesome. Um... So I can see that you can search for business data and actually bring it into the conversation with this. Um, but I have also heard about action messaging extensions. How are those different? Yeah, so if you want to perform action, again, from the whole Compose area, uh, so anything that lives in the Compose area where you type in message is uh, a messaging extension. So this one is a search-based one. In an action, you definitely are not obviously searching for information, but you're providing some information. Maybe it's an action. In our case here in the HR system, maybe you want to add a new candidate information or a new position that's opened up. So how would you do that? So let's go back again and see uh, a action-based uh, messaging extension. We have, uh, we are invoking the messaging extension about at mentioning, or you could go and search for the app. Um, here we have a nice button that would go ahead and perform the action for you which opens up a dialogue box, uh, as you can see here. 
a nice form uh, that you can go in and fill uh, all information. It needn't be uh, a form uh, a form that you're filling. It could also be just an information you're viewing about a person. So that's that's the action happening here. And right after I have made sure that everything is fine, I can uh, confirm this, and then it goes back to the HR system again. So it's it's. Pretty useful because I have not gone into another application here. I have done everything. I've not opened up the HR system. I'm not logged in. I'm here in my teams, in my conversation with my teammates, um, and I have done all that. So this is how an action-based uh, messaging extension would work. And hey, I can also um, uh, put that nice card again and call out maybe a recruiter and you know get more attention to what I've just done. So how does team know about your messaging extension? How do you make it pop in the UI? Right. So um, everything lives in the manifest file, the file that Bob was talking about earlier. So what I will do is I'll bring up the manifest file for this particular application and walk you through where uh, the missing extension is. So I already have uh, this file open here. Um, as you can see, um, this is a JSON file again, and you've got this compose extension area, which is where you're going to go ahead and put all the information out of your web service or where your uh, messaging extensions are hosted. Uh, we did two things here. We did search for a candidate and we also created a new position. Um, you can see those uh, here. So I searched for the candidate. This information would uh, let the team know that this is what the compose uh, or the messaging extension is for that. Uh, as you can see here, the type is uh, query. That means it's a search-based messaging extension. Uh, we've got the open position one that we uh, that was an action-based um, messaging extension. Again, the type is action. And you've also got parameters that you can pass. So everything lives in here. And this is what um, uh, Teams application uses to go ahead and then call uh, your application or a web, web service that's hosted online. So why is this a bot? What's, what's that doing there, technically? Uh, good question. So uh, this is great because, you know, you're talk we're talking about messaging extensions and you see a bot ID there. So uh, messaging extension uses the bot framework in order to uh, uh, authenticate or find your, uh, or connect or communicate with your web service. So it's like a security thing that works out uh, just fine. And for that, you need to either register a bot uh, with channel registration, or you could, if you already have a bot, then you could go ahead and use that as well. So this is why we have a bot ID here. Thanks. That's great. So I can see that messaging extensions are useful um, in, in so many ways, but what if your app wants to interact with just one user in the group context, maybe in response to somebody clicking on a card or taking some other kind of action? Uh, yeah, that's that's good. So I guess what you're trying to um, uh, find out is whether I always have to go to the compost area or not, or can I just do an action where exactly. I you know, get my own form? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So for that, we have the task module. So um, task modules are basically, um, I would say, they are these dialog boxes that would pop up and give you some information, or it would be a form again, uh, like you saw earlier. And another good thing about task modules is that uh, you don't necessarily have to uh, build one if you already have one. And in our case, we were talking about a HR system and I cannot think of any application uh, like that not have a form of its own, right? So if you wanna bring your forms in, you could use task modules. There are like little iframes that you can open up from your messaging extension. So maybe to make it a bit more clear, I'll go to another demos to show you how that works. Um, so again, coming back to our HR system here, you can see I've got a candidate feedback uh, uh, form that is hosted online in the our HR system. Um, I've got some information on uh, the, the, you know, the feedback that I got for a particular candidate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this form into our team's application inside uh, a card. So uh, you saw this already where we're bringing information of a candidate. We can open the candidate feedback, which uh, pops up a dialog box. And this is exactly the same file or the same form you saw earlier brought back into Teams. So this benefits you because you don't have to rewrite things just because you have your application in Teams now. Um, now, uh, this is pretty useful. Um, again, uh, to say you could either build your own uh, test modules or you could bring whatever you want to bring, if, as long as that URL is hosted online. 
Well, that's really awesome. So it's really just an eye, another iframe, kind of like a tab, only exactly. a little bit more interactive. And yeah. um, one thing I noticed is like the cards, once you send them, they, they're static, but um, you could update them, but um, yeah. it's not quite the same. You're, you are pulling in real time data about that feedback, right? So that, that was really cool. That's right. So yeah, there should be some code going in there and getting the parameters and filling out that form. I guess another scenario that, that I'm wondering about is what if the application just wants to send some information into a team or maybe even broadcast information out to multiple teams? Uh, yeah, so um, connectors are like one of my favorites. So custom connectors will uh, do that job for you. Just all you have to keep in mind is that connectors are not interactive like a bot. They do whatever they've been told. So in our case, if you want to broadcast uh, a news or a notification out to multiple teams, then you could use custom connectors. And let me just show you how you can configure this again in the, in the same context of this HR system. Um, we can have a connector maybe uh, when a person or a candidate is offered a job. Let's just broadcast it out to all the recruiters or the HR managers. So to do that, um, they need to have a custom connector. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how that's done. So we've got a very busy recruiters channel here. So much going on. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> they want to be um, yeah, updated about whatever is happening in the HR system when a candidate is offered a job. Or um, let's call it in our uh, context here, the stage change for a candidate. So they're going to go ahead and click on the connectors. And you can see here all the other built-in connectors that are already available. Um, and my favorite one is the incoming webhook. If you've got a URL and you want to send data from a service to your team, you could use that one. But okay, I'm not. I'm I'm, I'm uh, going to another uh, topic. But uh, let's just search for the talent one here, which is a custom connector. So we have the HR talent connector. I'm gonna go ahead and configure for this particular channel in this team, which will then send me a notification whenever uh, this action is happening. And I don't care where it happens because I need to just be informed, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and save this um, in my channel. So uh, you can see here uh, that now I've already set it up for my team uh, to get all the information and updates. Now let's go back to the recruitment uh, planning uh, channel, which is where all the good things happen uh, because uh, we are here in the hiring board and we're going to give someone a good news uh, by giving them a job. So we've got Linda here, her interview went fantastic and she's gonna be offered a job. So I'm gonna change the stage for Linda to offer. And the moment I do that, you can see that the recruiters channel is already lighting up because it, the notification has been sent out by your connector. And again, in the general channel as well at the same time. So imagine the kind of time you're saving for uh, anyone who's gonna sit in the back of the teams and start typing this notification or send an email. That's not gonna happen when you have a custom connector. So it's pretty useful and uh, you can see here the connector not only uh, gives a notification, uh, uh, but it also provides all the information that the teammates need in order to understand what kind of change happened and this, uh, the candidate information, etc. So I find it pretty useful and I'm always excited about talking, uh, uh, talking about connectors. Well, that's really awesome. Uh, and I notice the connector sent, is that another adaptive card? Yes, it is. So maybe you could just clarify a little bit about adaptive cards i mean we've been using them a lot here but what is an adaptive card anyway yeah so look i i like to call adaptive cards as these actionable good looking cards because they are so so good looking um and they're no stranger to you like if you have been using uh an adaptive card, uh, you have been using your outlook uh to approve some emails then you you have been by the way these raccoons are Absolutely good looking. I live here close to Kassel in Germany and we have a lot of raccoons living here and they look so cute. Um, and uh, your Windows notification that you like to ignore is an adaptive card as well. So <laughs> any, uh, yeah, um, and any uh, notification sent out by bots and teams, most of the time they're adaptive cards if you see buttons and stuff there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really powerful and they're very interactive content of, uh, from your application embedded into another application. And the good thing is, well, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but you see the same adaptive card uh, example, not the timeline one, but the others, they're all the same card, but they act or look differently 
uh, in different apps. So wherever it's hosted, if it's an Outlook, mm. it shows up like an Outlook uh, card. Um, if it's a notification, it it looks like a notification. It doesn't look that like is really, notification. really, really cool. I love it. So it blends well into any experience. And there is a tiny, tiny uh, catch there because, you know, you really don't have control uh, uh, for the UI aspect of an adaptive card, which is great because that's what we want. You want things to blend in. Um, and it's also open source, so uh, you can go ahead and see how this is uh, wired up. Uh, and also reusable, you can create reusable templates and the templating service, uh, which basically would uh, differentiate it from your data, your template from your data. In that case, you could keep reusing the template anywhere you want. Wow, these adaptive cards look so useful. And I love when I learn something new, getting my hands dirty and, and actually learning and how to use it. So what can viewers do to get started building these? And what language is it written in anyways? Uh, take a guess, F sharp, C sharp, well, no, you just have to know JSON, so which, which is really cool. Like. Um, even consultants can go in, go in and create their adaptive parts. With, and you know what? Uh, since you asked that question, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can build one. And all you need uh, is a browser and an internet connection that works, which most of the time doesn't work for me. Um, so we have uh, here adaptivecards.io. This is the site you need to memorize. But don't worry if you haven't. We have links to everything. Um, so adaptivecards.io is where you go, and you can see here it's a uh, uh, a site that you can. This is your go-to site if you want to build one. So you've got samples here. Um, you, there are heaps of samples that you can take a, a sneak peek at and see how it's being built. Uh, you can see here there are all JSON and um, yeah, it is. And you've got the data here. You've got the adaptive card here. You can see how it looks here. Um, and another aspect is if you don't want to, uh, uh, you know, divide your data from your template, you could also uncheck this templating option, but I suggest templating is so much easier. Um, so you can view that as well. And uh, another good thing is you have a designer. So this is where you would come in and go ahead, go crazy about uh, your uh, designs. So you can drag and drop the elements here. Um, and see how it looks. Uh, you can see how it looks inside a Microsoft Teams light mode. Uh, you can see how it would look in a Windows notification. So it's pretty handy. This is uh, really, yeah, really nice. Seen, yeah. You know, every, every, I haven't seen this different fuse here. here. So did you know that there's also a Visual Studio Code extension? Oh, I did not. Yeah, it's not quite as cool as the website, but um, it's really handy if you're already in Visual Studio Code. Sounds amazing. So it looks like uh, the sausage is made. Now, how do we get it out? So how do you uh, get your application out to your users? Well, um, uh, let me just do a little demo and show what some of those options are. So here, you've already seen App Studio quite a bit and in all the other demos, I'm sure. Um, and really, now you know that this is just a JSON editor that makes it a little easier because it knows the format of everything. By the way, a really great tool uh, when you're using App Studio or editing the manifest is the manifest schema, which again, we'll post in the, um, in the notes um, because that describes what every single field does and how Teams uses it in a lot more detail. Um, anyway, when you've got your manifest the way you want, um, you've seen people install it and that would install it for just the developer to use. Um, I'm going to actually show downloading it um, and the other option, of course, is publishing, which would publish it into our team store. And that's a whole process. Um, we'll provide a link in the um, Learn Together site um, on how to do that. I'm just going to download it. And this is something I might do if I was either moving it to another tenant or maybe I'm going to um, install this for use within an enterprise. So what I downloaded was a zip file. And here's the zip file inside is that same manifest file that you saw before. So um, again, you don't need any special tools. All you need is the ability to edit a JSON file and the ability to make a zip archive. So now let me upload that into our app catalog. So here under apps in the team sidebar, you'll see <clears throat> kind of all the apps for my tenant. So my tenant is called MS Labs. 
So built for MS Labs, that's my tenant app catalog. And below that are all the apps that are available in the store. Um, so from other vendors and from Microsoft. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload this and you'll see I have a couple of choices. I could upload this for me or my team, which is sort of like the install button in App Studio. And I have to have permission to do that, by the way, that's turned off by default. So um, you wanna kind of maybe bake cookies for your admin and make sure that they know that they're really loved and that they want to turn on your ability to upload apps and maybe even upload the app. To yeah, the give them all love to your admins. Now is the time to give a nice Christmas present. So I'm going to go find that zip file and upload it. And there it is. So uh, now notice that a lot of the information that was stitched into that, um, into that manifest file is now here for the user to view as they're deciding whether or not to install the app. I'll go ahead and add this to a team. And I think I'll add it to the emergency response team. And that that's all I need to do. So this is how users can find your app and install it either into a team or for their own use. In this case, I need to configure one of the tabs and I'm done. And the app is ready to go. The bot is ready and everything like that. So users need to look in the store, uh, right? So is, is there any other way you can push these up to users? Absolutely. So um, an admin can set up something called a Teams app policy. So what you're looking at here is the screen in Teams administration. And notice that there's a get started app um, that I've proactively installed and pinned for every user that this policy uh, applies to, which might be the whole company. So now users are gonna come in and they're gonna see my app pinned to the very top of their navigation bar. Um, and it's that easy. Users don't have to install it, it's just there. Um, and by the way, this is the, um, this particular app is the Learning Pathways app, which is a really, it's a free one from Microsoft. And um, again, there's pointers in the notes on how to set that up um, as sort of some nice built-in end user training for users. The other useful tool is a Teams template. So here um, I've got a screenshot. Uh, the admin is creating a new team, a new team template for staffing projects. And by the way, you can do all this with the Graph API. So your app could actually set this up as part of the install process. So now when the user goes to, to create a new team, one of the choices is a staffing team. And that team has the app pre-installed so that after it's created, it's already got everything that was in that Teams template, including extra channels, um, all the various features of Teams turned on and off, and apps installed automatically as part of creating that team. Hey, please share in the comments if you're already using Teams packaging and Teams templating. Um, and please that would visit aka.ms slash learn together to find the links to all the resources that we discussed today. And, and also for your learning path, go to aka.ms slash dev apps for Teams. Now over to you, Christina. And welcome back to Learn Together. Look who we just found. I was just wandering around, you know, because don't tell anyone, but I come here because they have sodas. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, I run out of Dr. Pepper at home and- <laughs> You have to show up. <laughs> oh, but, 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 but admit it, you were just, you were having so much fun watching Learn Together at home. Yes. Like, um, join us, right? I went on there and I was like talking at the party and I was like, this is so cool. There's people at the office. I put my mask on. Well, obviously we're, mm -hmm. we're apart, we you are. know, but I have my mask on and they're like, hey, Seth, grab a mic and go on. I'm like, I don't know how to do this kind of stuff. We're so ha I'm so happy to see I'm you. I'm so glad to be here. And and we've had a great Learn Together event. We're going to give you guys a little bit of a breather. We're going to go to Cecil, and then we're going to be back to wrap things up and talk with some of our watch parties. See you in a second. Why don't we take a second and try out this breathing exercise called snake breathing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have my good posture, right? My back straight, my chest is out, and I'm going to inhale very deeply in my nose. And then I want to exhale through my mouth and I'm going to hold a very low hissing sound and like slowly release all that air that's inside of my chest. Right. So let's try it out. Right. In five, four, three, two, one. Inhale.
Okay, I think that's enough. I think you get the point. But definitely try this a few times on yourself. Try it with your family members. Maybe even make it a competition and see who could hold their breath the longest. Anyway, take care and enjoy. And welcome back to Learn Together. I'm Christina Warren. I'm Seth Warren. Yes, and we, uh, we've had a great event. What we're going to do right now, I've learned so much about building apps for Microsoft Teams. What about you, Seth? You know, I, the thing that I'm most excited about is that that's where I do all of my work. Yep. Imagine being able to be more productive by doing the extra things that we've learned about today. I agree. I agree. And also, like, imagine being able to like, build apps for it to, like, in my opinion, I mean, I, I, I want to have a, a, a Taylor Swift music player. That's the app I'm going to build. Well, I think we're going to have to share the development of that because I am a T-Swift fan as well. Which I appreciate. Now, well, we've had um, watch parties all over the world joining in with us, and we're going to go now to a watch party hosted by our own Emily Rose. Emily, how are you? You know, I'm living the dream. This has been a lot of fun to uh, experience as a, uh, you know, a completely new format to, to something that we're all pretty familiar with. So Yeah, no, it's fantastic. And I love to see the people in your watch party. We have so many, oh my gosh, we see cats and we have seen so many of our <laughs> presenters who've um, been able to present this content to us and yeah. learn so much from. Hello, everybody. It's so good to see you all. Uh, so what what was your kind of biggest takeaway, would you say, from the event? Like what was maybe something you learned or something that you're excited to, to dive more deeply into um, now that the event is over? Yeah, you know, I would say for me, the biggest thing that has me excited is just hearing the feedback from customers around you know, the excitement of, of being Teams users that maybe didn't necessarily know that this was something that they could do. I had several people in my stream that were super excited about like meeting sensibility and things like that. So um, I think that's it. I'm, I'm most excited to see what people come up with now that, that you know, folks that have been using Teams are uh, aware of, of what's, what's, uh, what's possible. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I, I'm so glad people like you were gonna be able to get that sort of feedback um, so mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, we can build that more into the Teams product. Um, where can what's the best way for people to give you that sort of feedback uh me directly or our team or your um, team yeah and, or in general you know just what's the best way you know to for to for you know the users out there the developers out there maybe the would-be developers out there students startups whatever mm -hmm. what's the best way for them to you know get get their feedback um well to, i would to... i would say engaging directly with i mean a lot of us are on twitter if twitter is the medium that you use like um you know pretty much everyone here that you see above me all these pretty faces are highly engaged uh, on twitter we have obviously our first party doc sites um, and uh, you know social media of, of uh, various channels uh, i'm starting a TikTok channel too if you want to uh, nice. you know learn about uh, about tech through that but, you're going to have a TikTok uh, channel now it will, will there will there will be will it be like maybe teams talk like definitely yeah i think so the thing that i'm personally really that, interested maybe. in in seeing is that uh, is just how uh, how you know the, the changes recently in the world have, have kind of affected how people are collaborating obviously being a part of the team's team uh that's something that i'm interested in but but yeah just seeing how all these things are merging and meshing together is really exciting for me so i love yeah, it. To it i love it all right so uh, stay tuned to, to emily's you know tech talk stay tuned to <laughs> all the different ways we can collaborate thank you so much for all yeah. of the presenters because you did an amazing job i learned so much and um, what I'm going to do now is we're going to bring in uh, Todd Anglin again, and, and Todd and I we're going to kind of close things out. Todd, hello again, hello. Seth. Hello, hello, to, hello to Seth. Seth is we we are so on the fly here. We're going to be honest. Yeah. Seth doesn't even can't even hear anything. So oh no, just, me and Todd we can read each other's minds. Yeah, he can. But here's, right. the, here's the thing: I'm Seth is just here. here to look pretty, but mm. but he's also just good at ambiance. Uh, I, I thought this was a Wendy's. Um, <laughs> obviously, not the right place. Ma'am, this, good is, ma this, is, a, this is a Microsoft yeah, office. This is, a, this is a Microsoft, okay, okay. Yeah. No, it's been a fun day. I think uh, we covered a lot of ground, and I know for a lot of people who watched today, you know, as I said up front, we don't expect you to have learned or mastered things, so that's why we updated Microsoft Learn with content that maps to each segment you saw today. So really soon, right after this stream wraps up, the Teams Learn Challenge is opening up, so you can win some prizes while you go through Microsoft Learn and, and actually get hands-on with what you saw today's stream. So that link again, AKMS slash Teams Learn Challenge. It'll open up, head out there, jump into Learn, and uh, and try it out. I mean, it's the holidays. You're wrapping up your your main projects of the year, hopefully. Great time to go build that Taylor Swift uh, yes. app. Um, I think that'd be a great one. I, I agree. So, so aka.ms slash Teams um, Learn Challenge. Dev apps for Teams, too. Make sure yeah, Dev apps for Teams is where you can get great resources to learn more about getting started with Microsoft Teams. And then the, the Teams um, uh, Challenge, um, it, Teams Learns Challenge, uh, we've got prizes. Seth, you'll like this, uh, um, Xbox, um, uh, all uh, Xbox, um, what is it? All Game Pass. All Game, Pass. Game, Game Pass. Pass. Game, yeah. Game Pass. There we go. Game Pass Ultimate. We've got Game Pass Ultimate uh, subscriptions that we're giving out. So you know, Seth will 
people like that. Um, so uh, anything else you kind of want to say when we're kind of closing things out here? Todd, we've had a great, great day of learning. <laughs> and Todd, I think you're on mute. I think it <gasps> muted me automatically. Wow, it did not run. Oh my God. 2020. You know, Honestly, I wanted to make that was the authentic. most teams moment ever. <laughs> when we go back to real life, I'm going to walk up to people and just be like, <laughs> right. Just start moving the mouth. I, I wanted this to feel more authentic for you. So, no, I would say the, the comments we saw on Twitter, the uh, the watch parties, those were all super fun. It was fun seeing people use together mode for their own watch parties. The underwater scene, I've not seen that one before. That's pretty cool. I'll have to check that out. Uh, but I'll, I will remind everyone that we want to help you out and make you successful building apps for teams. So, if you came out of today's live stream or you're watching this on demand and you have an idea for an app, but you're not quite sure how to make it, let us help you out. Head on over to AKMS slash Teams App Consult, C-O-N-S-U-L-T. Uh, share with us a little bit about what you're thinking about and the M365 Developer Advocacy Team, my team, will try to help you all out and getting on the right path and uh, help you refine your idea so you can be successful building those elevator music apps, those Taylor Swift apps, or those productivity apps that make uh, everyone's life a little easier inside of Teams. So uh, check that out. I love it. AKA.ms slash Teams App Consult. Also, AKA.ms slash Dev Apps for Teams and AKA.ms slash Teams uh, Learn Challenge. So, yeah. Got and if you resources. forget those links, that's a lot of links I know. We've got them all on the uh, the resources page yeah, afterwards. Resources page. So, don't worry about it. It's all there. You can find it. Uh, we'll make it easy for you. Yeah, we'll make it easy for you if you, if you, you couldn't follow uh, me trying to read off of a weird uh, uh, computer screen. I followed. Off, like, yeah, uh, Seth followed. But, uh, no, we've really enjoyed having you all here. We've all enjoyed learning together. We even got a new learner at the very end, which is awesome. Thank you for being here, Seth. That's right. Thank you all of you out there for, for watching and learning with us, and we will see you next time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm also closing here in a few seconds. Thanks, everybody, for joining, for all the great comments. Lovely to, to have spent the last two hours with you. Thank you so much.